So ladies and gentlemen, this is the latest in the series and the greatest playoff periods for the Montreal Canadiens. Now today, we're going to expand on what I talked about a few weeks ago about the 1986 playoffs. I talked about the overtime period against Hartford where Claude Lemieux had scored uh, the winning goal in Game 7 of the quarterfinals. But this we're going to talk about the finals between Calgary and Montreal. Now, uh, 89 uh, was the year Calgary finally won the Cup. But 86, there was all good bets that Calgary probably had the team to beat Montreal. They won the opening game of the series, but Game 2 turned out very interesting. Uh, after trailing for much of the game, Montreal tied it up, sent it to overtime, and Brian Scroglin in the quickest overtime goal in NHL history, on a, a feed from the ever-talented Mike McPhee, allowed uh, the Habs to tie the series. Now, they went back to Montreal, won two very big games, including a game that saw the debut of uh, uh, Calgary uh, player Brett Hull, the future Hall of Famer, who hit the post in a very key uh, point uh, in uh, one of the games of Montreal. Now, Montreal won both games, came back to Calgary, and a lot of people felt that, yes, uh, Calgary was buying 3-1 in the series, but because of the closeness of the first four games, maybe the series is, uh, was not done. Now, there was factors that played in to the period we're talking about. The third period of, of any Stanley Cup final game, no matter if it's the final game or uh, one of the early contests, comes down to a third period. To win the third period, obviously, you're going to win a playoff game. Now, what happened with Calgary in this game? They made some uh, lineup uh, mistakes. They played a, a, a goon by the name of Nick Foychu, uh, who was a uh, kind of a uh, rough-and-tumble player that came over from the Rangers and was in the league of a number of years. Kind of a, an unnecessary goon that would take unnecessary penalties. And Foychu did in this contest. He took... Uh, Several penalties, including one coincidental minor in the third period that uh, allowed Montreal to open up. But one of these penalties led to a Montreal goal. Montreal had led one nothing after the first period on a goal by Gaston Gingras. And the second period after uh, Steve Bozak had tied it uh, for uh, Calgary on a great feed from uh, Jim Poplinski. Uh, at 10.49, Skoglin, in his only second game, second goal of the playoffs, uh, put... Uh, Montreal ahead to 2-1. Now, when it came down to it, Montreal really needed to uh, have a great start to the third period, and he did that. He dominated the play uh, for uh, much of the first few minutes, and the momentum continued to build and build, and that veteran defenseman Rick Green would never score anything but important goals to the playoffs, going back to the 84 series against Quebec, uh, scored a counter uh, to make it 3-1, uh, on a feed uh, from Dave Maley and Mike Lawler, two very defensive players. Now, uh, Matt Snasson also had a great game here, and uh, it played off when he fed Bobby Smith with the eventual uh, cup-winning goal at uh, 10.30. Uh, it was Nasson's 11th, 11th assist of the playoffs. Now, back by Patrick Waugh, Montreal was uh, strong in this game, but he started to feel a little bit tired late in the third period. Steve Bozak scored his second of the playoffs at 1646 from Jamie McCowan. And then Joey Mullen, who was an underrated sniper at the time, uh, scored with 46 seconds left uh, from uh, Quinn and McM McGinnis to make it 4-3. And the last 46 seconds uh, just goes to show how good Montreal's defense was and how good Patrick was. He made numerous key saves in that third period, but uh, not, not more so than uh, those in the last three minutes. Yes, he did give up a goal to Joel Mullen, but uh, Patrick will obviously was uh, playing a combination of stand-up and butterfly style at the time. Calgary had a very uh, important offense, as noted by the fact he got past the Oilers in that rough seven-game series in the uh, in the quarterfinals, uh, the Western Conference side. But it's kind of ironic, though, when you, when you think of it, for a team to score two goals in the third period on the road in a Stanley Cup winning uh, uh, game rarely happens anymore. Usually uh, uh, a road victory for the championship squad is in overtime or, uh, you know, uh, by more than one goal. It's very rarely that uh, a team puts his fans through the heck of dead because you got to understand uh, Montreal in the final game did not trail at any point in the contest and that was very important. But like I said, Number of factors. Uh, 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 Claude Mew had some big assists in the game. Uh, uh, Nasslin, great playmaker. Bobby Smith 
who he traded to Minnesota for, giving up, uh, you know, some key players. He did what he needed to do in that uh, final game. And uh, it was a it was an unpredicted cup, but Montreal was the better overall team against Calgary. Now, would he have defeated Gretzky and the Oilers in the final? Well, we'll never know, but I mean, there's a good chance if Gretzky would have woken up from the, the sleep he was in against Calgary. And uh, you got to understand, too, the Montreal Canadiens had a lot of good defensive players, and most of them rookies, because Krogan, McPhee, uh, Lemieux, uh, a few others, uh, Lawler, uh, Ludwig, were only recent additions to the Montreal Canadiens, and he didn't have enough playoff experience. I think Gretzky and the Oilers would have defeated Montreal at least in six games, but you got to play who's in front of you. And you got to understand, it was destiny for Montreal to win that year because all the young players that Montreal had, the timing was right. Stefan Richer was in that lineup. You had um, uh, Steve Rooney. You had, uh, you know, some of the younger players. Uh, Gaston Gingras had come back. Uh, you know, uh, it was just the timing was right. But if you have a chance, go on YouTube and look at the full game or the, uh, the shortened game that shows up on Sportsnet. That third period probably ranks as one of the best defensive periods played by any team in NHL Stanley Cup history where they did score two goals. Uh, they easily held that 2-1 lead, I think it was for 20 minutes before Rick Green had scored. That's amazing. And if you look back in the games in Montreal, uh, one of the contests, Montreal only needed to score one goal to win. It was a different time. There was a, let's see, a trap. But Montreal's defensive style, uh, Jean Perron, who was a, a big uh, university uh, champ, a uh, good coach from New Brunswick, uh, they bought into the system. But like I said, for uh, Bobby Smith to score seven goals in the playoffs, each one was big. But I'm uh, just saying, the role players from Montreal, when they were needed, they would score those goals, and this was a contest. And don't disrespect to Calgary, but Calgary did not have the, the, the depth they would have later on, because, I mean, when uh, Doug Gilmore arrived, from St. Louis shortly after. That was the big difference. And I don't even think if Gilmore was there, would, would have uh, allowed Montreal to, uh, to lose the cup. But, uh, you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Big Stanley Cup we all celebrated in North New Brunswick for about six months after the won, and well-deserved. So uh, I'm doing a number of podcasts today because I had a few ideas in the pike, and I wanted to do it as a thank you for the people who allowed me to reach 90,000 hits this week. If you have a comment, like, or subscribe, well appreciated. And um, your comments are uh, are always uh, uh, taken with a grain of salt. If something you don't like, if you speak it reasonably, I will listen to it. But I am trying to make this as a, a series of sports file columns, which uh, tie into my former print column for BNI. Uh, the papers I uh, did them for uh, had a lot of readers that read those and supported it. So that's a continuation and a tribute to them. Again, uh, thank you so much. Have a good uh, Saturday. Be safe. And if you're in the States uh, this weekend, wear not only your mask, just don't go out. (laughs) It's getting weird down there, man. It's getting weird. Have a good day. Bye.